15 years ago, uh, which was my 16th birthday. So we're going back to May 16th, 1991. It was a Thursday. Oh, I'm sorry, I forget that there's people over on this side too. Shit. Um, I'll, I'll try to talk. This is kind of weird. The room is wide. Okay, I'll try and go both sides. Uh, May 16th, Thursday. I can't believe that I'm sitting here on my 16th birthday sobbing. <laughs> but I am. I keep trying to blame myself or justify it, but I can't. It was just a bad day. I spent most of it alone or feeling isolated. I went job hunting, total flop, and I was gone and busy from 6.50 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. Ugh, all I got all day was ugly flowers, <laughs> lame cards, and lots of happy birthdays. And I appreciated them. I was happy until this evening when it came to a climax of having to eat my birthday dinner and then having to deal with fuck-offs during play rehearsal. <laughs> my parents, who are here tonight, uh, my parents were wonderful and supportive as always, and I feel bad that I was so superficial. Oh, God, now I just feel worse. How awful. I'm sitting here bawling on my birthday. I'm also sick. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm going to go cry now. No, no, I should finish. <laughs> I've never been kissed. I've never... <laughs> I've never even had a boyfriend. I've been kissed on stage, and I've been hugged by really nice girlfriends who I care for. <laughs> but something's missing here. People treat me like shit. It seems like no one respects me or likes me. I have no income. <laughs> My parents love me too much. I'm self-centered. I'm superficial and materialistic. I'm selfish. I'm shallow. No one likes me. I don't appreciate the few who do. I'm lazy. I'm out of shape. I have no motivation. I lose everything. I hate people. I'm ugly. A salon of shame virgin. So please be gentle. Ariel, I'd like to wish you a happy birthday. It's a beautiful day to celebrate a birthday. 80 degrees, sold out salon of shame, and Jerry Falwell's dead. <laughs> and you are not a Christian. Um, all right, so I'm gonna read a short poem that I wrote uh, when I was at, uh, uh, in the late 80s, when I was a student at UCLA. I am in period costume. And it requires a very quick backstory. Um, there was a girl, and uh, me and this jackass named Mike were both kind of going after her. And I wanted to really impress her, so I took her out on a date to Benihana for dinner. <laughs> and we kind of dressed up and, uh, and drove to Benihana and you know watched the chopping and the slicing and the stir frying. And uh, it was a great dinner and uh, had a good time, and I paid for it. And uh, we're driving home, and I'm driving her home, and the next day on the steps of Haynes Hall at UCLA, I wrote this poem. <laughs> it's called Self-Didacticism, which is just a... <laughs> it's just a pretentious English major's way of saying no to self. <clears throat> Self-Didacticism. Be a dick to every girl. It seems cruel upon the surface, but try it once and you will find that cruelty serves its purpose. <laughs> Yesterday, I loved them all, but now that's in the past. Today, I say, fuck them all, because <laughs> nice guys finish last. Ben Haley. So, I've got, what have I got? 
got here. This is a journal, and I'm sorry to whoever I bumped into on the way up, up here, I'm sorry. You okay? Okay, good. Um, this is from June 10th, 1991, so I was 22. And um, yeah, I've just been dumped and uh, by this girl named Allison. We'd only dated a few months, but I was mad in love with her. I mean, just crazy about her, as crazy about her as 22-year-old Ben could be. So here we go. It's been five days since Allison broke up with me on the understanding that this was better than continuing on considering the differences we have and the turmoil inside her that leads to arguments. <laughs> she will try to rectify these things in herself and thereby better understand herself and will then decide whether she wants to continue to date me again. <laughs> I will not even begin to attempt to describe or inscribe the living hell I have been going through for the last few days. <laughs> At certain points, I have questioned my own sanity. <laughs> uh, <well. laughs> I will only say that things are slowly getting easier to keep off my mind. Control, order, and law are my only friends now. <laughs> and, and that which I find in those around me whom I trust. I want to be with her again so badly. Even as I write these words, I realize that I am distancing myself from my emotions. It is the only way to keep going and to survive. <laughs> I love you, Allison Deke. I do not know if you will come back to me. I do not know if I can give myself to someone completely ever again. <laughs> then, in the third person, please be strong, Ben. <laughs> then, please think hard about this, Allison. <laughs> please realize we could have everything because I saw it when we were together. I do not know. I can't write what she said before that because it's too painful. <laughs> I know. Uh, my friends are there for me, but they aren't quite sure. Uh, what to do now that I'm not in to write here by itself here tonight. I want somebody to run to. I want somebody to run to me. Aww. Sunday evening. Last Wednesday night, something very wonderful happened. Allison and I were in my room talking about how things are now. And once again, we were left with the same situation, her still not being able to decide, blaming herself for the pain we both feel but knowing that she is not ready still. I gently pulled her close, and she lay in front of me as I held her. It was so wonderful to be close to her again, as it always has met with me. She said she still couldn't imagine that changing, but after I held her for a while, she reminded me what she had said earlier, the reason being that perhaps she had changed her mind. She felt that desire, that need for intimacy again. She said she could imagine it happening right now. <laughs> I was scared, <laughs> not knowing if I should pursue this intimacy in fear of damaging any hope of us getting back together again by clouding her thinking time. <laughs> but I really wanted to, wanted so desperately to love her again like that. I followed her and she touched me like she led me to. It was incredible, I mean that. I'm still not ready. And I cried, and she cried, but I still felt loved. I still love her so much and would do anything for her, even though she still isn't ready to decide, and she said that this couldn't happen again until she did decide. She speaks of the breakup as much more of a temporary thing than she once did, so I have a lot of hope, even though she still can't promise anything. I want to hold her close. She watched fireworks with me and my family on the 4th um, while we were watching.